Hello, welcome to another video. Today we have another GTA 5 benchmark test, but this time it's on the Acer Aspire 5 slim laptop. It does have an upgraded 32GB of DDR4 RAM, so keep that in mind. So, first test is a resolution of 1920 by 1080p. Everything is off and VSync is off. So the first test actually went well. So you can see the video memory right here. Oh yeah, shout out to the uh, comment section uh, from another video who mentioned MSI Afterburner. So that's what I have running right now. It's pretty cool, pretty nice. And uh, it's pretty interesting too. So we do have the MSI Afterburner running. So the first test, FPS at 30. So it kinda, it's kind of all over the place, especially with the V-Sync off. You know, you got 30 FPS, 29, and it just drops down to 14. In my opinion, um, I do not recommend running GTA 5 at 1080p with VSync off. The reason why is um, there's going to be a little bit of lag from time to time. So also just wait for the second test when we do the one with VSync on. You guys are going to see. Spoiler alert, it crashes. But uh, we'll get to that soon enough. So RAM usage, definitely sweet spot for this laptop upgrade would be 16 gigabytes because Oh, there's the lag right there. Drops to 4.5 FPS. So pretty interesting, right? So yeah, for the RAM, uh, like what everybody was saying, recommend 16 gigabytes. I agree with them. You know, definitely uh, 16 gigabytes is a sweet spot for this laptop. 8 gigabytes could be applied to like a game like GTA 5. And then the other 8, you know, portion of it could be used for the shared GPU memory. So 32 gigabytes is definitely overkill. So for the jet scene, you're going to notice 29, 30 FPS and it starts to lag here. CPU runs at 100% and it drops down to 6 FPS. So yeah, um, in my opinion, just a sudden uh, FPS drop there is might not make the game as enjoyable. That, But that's just really my opinion. I'm sure there's ways to, you know, I'm sure people will like overclock it or something. But in my opinion, this is not really a gaming laptop. So... You know, I don't think it has enough cooling and it wasn't just, it wasn't really meant to like game. So I think the sweet spot for GTA 5 would definitely be 720p, but you guys are going to see in some of the testing uh, later. I mean, everybody has their own personal preference. So the first test, I'm glad uh, it went, it went okay. I just don't like overworking the CPU too much. So it was running at 31 FPS in this uh, driving scene, and then it drops to 17, and then CPU usage, 71%. So not bad, not bad at all. But you can definitely notice the sudden uh, frame drops there. So it's actually pretty fun um, doing all this testing. I feel like I definitely know the limits of this computer more. And I have to say it's gotta be the CPU. So it's running at 93% CPU now. So yeah, GTA 5 is definitely a popular game. Nice. Pretty cool. So the next test is the interesting one. So we have a 1920 by 1080 p So VSync is turned on this time. Everything else is pretty much off. So you can look at the video memory being used right there. So let's get to it. So this is going to be interesting. First off, starts at 30 FPS. By the way, spoiler alert, it crashes. So I definitely don't recommend doing a 1080p with VSync on for GTA 5 if you're going to be playing on this laptop. High probability that it will crash. Uh, the main reason I believe is the CPU, but uh, just wait for the, uh, the, the jet scene. So yeah, RAM usage still wasn't a lot. I would say it's about 20-ish, 20, 20 to 25% usage of the RAM. So CPU is 41, 46. And I did do a reboot, and I tried it again, and it did crash. So we are coming to the crash part. So here's the jet. You know, everything's going good, 20 FPS. You know, 21 FPS, 22, 24. I'm like, oh, this is actually pretty good. Very cool, right? 19. 
So I was like, oh, maybe, you know, they can just use VSync on or something. But boy, was I wrong. So it starts to, uh, you know, CPU is about 55%. So I'm like, oh, it can handle it, no problem, right? Pretty cool. You know, even RAM usage wasn't that much. And then here it goes. It starts to lag and it drops to 13 FPS, 6 FPS. CPU is 100% and it crashed. So, wow. I mean, I'm sure there's a way to, uh, you know, like modify, you know, fan speed or something or overclock it or something. But in my opinion, I don't want to overclock this laptop. Um, I just don't like it struggling, but I'm sure people have their ways. Uh, this is my opinion, though. So the third test is a 720p test with a VSync off. So in my opinion, uh, 720 it is definitely the sweet spot for this uh, GTA 5 game. You know, running at 30 FPS, it can handle it pretty good. You guys don't have to stick around, but the last test is also a 720p test with VSync on. In my opinion, they're pretty similar in terms of FPS. Uh, you know, so you know it's actually running pretty good at 720p. You got like 34, 33 FPS, 30 FPS. It even climbs up to 40 ish. So 4041, so pretty good. And the CPU seems to be holding very well. So pretty nice. Yeah, that jet scene is uh, pretty interesting, but at least it didn't crash. The only time I've seen it crash in this uh, GTA 5 benchmark testing was the VSync on 1080p test. So pretty interesting stuff. So here it is. It starts to get a little more intense at 82%, 75%, but... It doesn't crash, and even if you look at the FPS, it's at the 40s range. So I feel like the computer did good, definitely push it to its limits. But like I said, it's all about personal preference, and I'm sure people have different techniques on improving gameplay for this. So 40 FPS, 43, pretty, pretty good, pretty sweet. So yeah, I mean, in my opinion, it's not not that bad at 720p. You know, it's 40 FPS, 43. So pretty sweet, pretty cool. CPU usage is like 98, 94%, but it didn't crash, so... I'm not sure what would happen if you kept gaming with this long term. You know, if the CPU is going to hold up, but I mean, so far it's done pretty good. But yeah, I am a casual gamer, so I don't plan on gaming a lot with this laptop at all. So yeah, CPU at 88%, 96%, FPS is holding around the 20 range, so pretty cool. Not bad at all, in my opinion. Awesome. So for the final test, we do have the VSync on this time with the 1080p. Sorry, 720p. My bad. So full screen, uh, 720p with VSync on. So pretty similar results, you know. I mean, they're kind of close. I, I would say there's a more consistency with the VSync on. But, uh, you know, in my opinion, it would be hard to really notice a difference if you had it on or off for 720p. I just feel like the CPU has a bit more of a handle on the test, on the benchmarking test here. So yeah, it runs at 30, 40 FPS. So not bad at all. Yeah, it's unlike the uh, 1080p where, you know, you can see the lag and stuff and, you know, so definitely a difference there. I mean, you could probably try the other resolutions as well, you know, but uh, my opinion, 720p, it's pretty nice. Well, for me, it's, it's nice enough, so... So even the jet scene. 30 FPS, pretty good.
37, 43, 41. So yeah, this Acer laptop is pretty awesome, I have to say. You know, I really like this laptop a lot, especially with all the upgrade options, and they don't make it hard for you to upgrade as well. So definitely a pretty sweet laptop. I also like that this does have a um, dedicated uh, GPU as well, even if it's only 512 megabytes. And then you just give it a little RAM boost to increase the shared GPU memory, and you're good to go. So there we go. So I don't really have anything else to add to this video. It's actually a pretty lengthy video now that I realize it. But uh, pretty good. So I hope everybody enjoyed this video. I'm just going to let the uh, thing play out. But yeah, like I said earlier, I definitely do not recommend playing VSync on at 1080p. There is a high probability that the game will crash if you are doing intense FPS stuff. But then again, like I said, I'm a casual gamer and I'm sure there are ways... So that's pretty much all I got. Thank you everybody for watching. Take it easy.